iPads per one quarter. So in reality, when we say that our, interp our interpretation might be the number of iPads sold increases by 1.22 million each quarter. Now that's kind of wrong, right? Because if we look at the graph, it, the increase was not always 1.22 million. Sometimes it was a bigger increase, sometimes it was a small, uh, a big decrease, and so on. But on average, if you take this across the whole spectrum, so if you were to say it went up by 1.22, every quarter now I'm not I'm not drawing this to make it perfect but it would kind of look like that right it, every quarter would go up by 1.22 1 quarter 1.22 1 quarter 1.22 1 quarter 1.22 1 1 and so on until it hits September 2012 so you can actually compare the purple line to the steepness of some of these other ones and see that wow this this month it actually went up from 11 million all the way up to almost 16 million so that's a that's a growth of about 5 million right there um, per quarter and that was actually exactly in one quarter so how do we make sense of this what, what does it what does it mean to say just on average well so we have to specify on average and between uh, the quarters that we were considering uh, June 2010 and this was in September 2012 so between those two time periods, we saw this average increase. Well, what does this mean, average? If the increase were constant each month, each quarter, it would be 1.22 million. If it were constant, but if it were constant, it would go up by the same amount every quarter, and it would create this nice perfect shape of a graph where all of these bars would rest along this purple line. So that would be in an ideally perfect world. But then why do we use it if it's not a perfect world? For, if nothing else, it allows us to describe the overall trend across that entire period. And to some extent, it probably allows us to, to somewhat predict what happens next. So maybe we can assume that based on that two year, a two year plus average, that over the next quarter, we would expect about the same increase. And we could say, you know, it's going to go from about 14 million to about 15.22 million. Um, so I guess I went up a little too far there. But you get the idea that we can kind of predict into, into the future. Probably not too, too far because they probably won't continue to increase forever. In fact, maybe they're going to begin decreasing. We don't really know for a fact but it allows us to make some judgments. Now, of course, you can really easily lie with statistics and lie with data if you pick and choose the quarters that you want. Now, if you're iPad, you probably want to look at some different periods, like, oh, over the last two years, we've made some good progress. What about over the last uh, couple of quarters? So December 2011 to September 2012, that's almost a year. We actually noticed that overall, there's a drop in the uh, sales. So we went from roughly, I'll just make this uh, about 15.5 million, 15.5, and the quarter was in March 2012, so we'll call that, uh, I guess from the beginning, that would be one zero one two three four five six the sixth quarter, sorry, December 2011. And then in the ninth quarter, December or September 2012, the sales were, there were 14 million iPads sold that quarter. So now if you look at the difference, the, the rate of change, well the change is, and then you never have to worry about which way to subtract if you just think about what's happening. So